We've got this bed bug presentation to do. The wonderful thing about that is all, all the paperwork you got to do is just sign your name. So isn't that cool? Uh, there are no competency evaluations for the next two topics we're going to talk about, okay? Uh, there was an actual uh, uh, evacuation of a dormitory up in North Georgia at a college up there because they had an infestation of bed bugs. So he wanted to know what we were doing about bed bugs. And I was like, he want to know what I knew about bed bugs. And at the time, I didn't know much about them. Uh, when I was a young little kid growing up, me and uh, five of my boy cousins would all meet up in Barnesville, Georgia every summer and spend about three or four weeks with my great grandmother, uh, which was the coolest time I had when I was a kid uh, because she lived pretty primitive. She didn't have uh, uh, running water. Uh, she had to draw her water out of the well. She had the old uh, crank style uh, washboard where she washed clothes. All these old barns and, and there was old Civil War uh, wall that was there where they had a, little, a, a fort during the Civil War. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool going to an outhouse and using the bathroom, you know, when you're a young little buck like that. Uh, so anyway, uh, that, that was a very memorable time for me when I, when I was a young kid. And my, my great-grandmother used to tuck me and all my cousins in a big old, it was a huge bed. Uh, and uh, she would always say, good night, don't let the bed bugs bite. And then these things would poke me all night, so I thought I was getting eat up by bed bugs, but really it was these uh, uh, goose feathers that she had stuffed the mattress with that were sticky all night and come up through the fabric in the bedding. Uh, I don't remember ever having bed bugs or anything. That's about my only experience with bed bugs. Uh, me and uh, Matt Vincent, who's an environmental health specialist here, um, I asked Matt, what do you know about bed bugs? And he said, well, I know a good bit about them. He actually worked for the Georgia Department of Public Health over in Bibb County uh, prior to coming here to Central State Hospital. Uh, so, so Matt kind of put this uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation together for us. He did some research on it. Uh, there are bed bugs that are making a huge resurgence. Uh, they, they're very prolific breeders. Uh, their eggs can actually lay dormant for up to a year. Um, and they're very hard to kill because there are no sprays or insecticides that kill them. The only two ways to kill them is cold and heat, okay? So what we decided to do was use this. We, we've trained all of our housekeeping staff with this to be able to look out for the signs that a bed bug leaves behind. We've also used this in our forensic building uh, because that's actually the only area that we actually take admissions in, okay? We, we quit taking admissions back in November 2009 into the adult mental health program, uh, and that's where everyone used to have to access this campus, um, and we quit taking admissions there. Uh, so, we use this in, uh, with all the admissions. The, the thing is with, uh, with forensic admissions, those clients are coming in from another uh, institution, uh, be it a, a correctional institution, uh, or because basically they're, they're here because they've been found not guilty by reason of insanity. Uh, they're incompetent to stand trial because of their mental capacity, or they're here to have uh, psychiatric uh, testing uh, or assessments done uh, b because that, that's been ordered by a court system, okay? Uh, so normally they come in in, in uh, uh, correctional uniforms and those type of things. Uh, they don't come in like we used to have clients that came in with suitcases and everything else. Uh, so we pretty much feel like the main way that we're, if we ever have bed bugs uh, and infestation on our campus, they're going to come in with our staff, okay? Uh, so we're educating our staff with this process. Uh, we've already done the educational piece uh, up in, uh, in the Cook Building, as I said earlier, with our housekeeping staff. So bed bugs, we're going to talk about what are they, what do they look like, what are the health implications, how do we prevent them, how do we know if we have them, and how do we get rid of them if we do get them. A bed bug, what is a bed bug? A bed bug is a small parasitic insect that feeds on the blood of warm-blooded warm -blooded animals. They're usually elusive and usually nocturnal. Uh, they're very seldom, which means they very seldom come out during the day. Uh, Ma'am, can you cut off one of those light switches for me? Is that going to mess you up? Okay. That, that's the one I wanted you to cut off. Thank you so much. What do they look like? Adult bed bugs are reddish brown, flattened, oval, and wingless. Uh, adults grow from a quarter inch to three eighths inch in length and a quarter inch wide. This is the life cycle of a bed bug. As you can see here, this is the larva. This is what can actually lay dormant for up to a year, okay? 
uh, and then going counterclockwise, that's right out of the larva stage, all the way to adulthood. That's what an adult looks like, and when they become elongated like that, that means that they have fed so much that they're fixing to pop. Okay. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know about bed bugs is they actually have two sets of fangs. The first set of fangs that they bite you with, they inject an anesthetic into you, so uh, you never feel the the second set of fangs, which may actually uh, draw the blood out of you. There's a big grouping of them. That's how they like to hang out. There's one right out of the larva stage. Uh, in comparison to a penny, they're actually a little smaller than what I call a seed tick. During the early spring, if you're out in the woods and you, and, and you like to get some of those real small ticks on you, you really can't even hardly see them. You can feel them, but you can't see them. But uh, th these are actually a little smaller than that. The health concerns, they do not transmit communicable diseases. Uh, their bites can be a source of serious irritation for some, and they cause skin rashes and psychological effects and allergic symptoms. Now let's go back to that right there, psychological effects. Can you imagine the impact if we have an infestation of bed bugs on our campus? Okay, the majority of the clients that we serve here uh, have, they're here for psychological reasons, okay? Uh, therefore, that, that is not a good thing. Uh, here is a, the rash that they're talking about from the bites. How do we know if we have them? You must look hard to find them and it's not always obvious. The wonderful thing about our mattresses here at Central State that we use throughout all the divisions, all the buildings, the client care buildings, they don't really lend themselves to bed bug infestation because they're not your typical mattresses. Now our group homes, some of those, we do have the uh, double beds and that type of thing, so we have to be very vigilant of this. When we're making beds and stripping beds and all that good stuff, we, our, our housekeeping staff have, have to be very vigilant of that. Uh, but this is a bed, this is like a mattress, you know, that we have at our homes, uh, the, the pillow top type mattresses, and what you see there is all the excrement uh, or the, you know, the dried blood from, from, from their excrement. Uh, here's a seam on a, on a mattress, and that's them hanging out there. This gentleman here just rolled this uh, uh, seam back right here, and you can see them scattering. This is actually a bed frame, and those are not bed bugs. That is the excrement that is left behind from the bed bugs. That's the same bed with one of the screw holes. They like getting inside these type of things here. Here's a gentleman, a, a pest control professional, that's actually peeling back the carpet on, on some baseboards to, uh, to do an inspection. Somebody's sitting there hanging out playing Xbox and getting eat up, okay? That's excrement all, all between those sofa cushions there, okay? The thing is, you can play Xbox all day. You probably, until you start seeing a rash on you, you're not going to know you got bit. Prevention, preventing bed bugs from entering on clients or staff's personal effects is the best way to lower the potential for an infestation. Right now, we're trying to fast track a lot of our DD clients moving into an integrated community setting. So we have a lot of our DD clients that are going on trial visits, okay? Uh, means they go hang out at a group home or they may go home to their home where they have real family members that are there and they go and stay with them for a few days. When they come back in, we've got to look at their stuff. We've got to make sure they're not bringing anything back in here to put, a, put out into our campus. The following tips will help you reduce your risk of bed bugs. Wash all bedding regularly in hot water. The water should be at least 120 degrees. Okay, we do that. I don't know if you do that at home or not. I would suggest checking your water heater and see, if, see what, what temperature you keep it on. Vacuum floors regularly. Use a brush tool of your vacuum to vacuum your mattress. Use a crevice tool to vacuum crevices in the mattress and your baseboards. Use a plastic cover over your mattress. Bed bugs can't hide on the plastic cover. Okay? I don't think I could sleep on a plastic cover. Uh, I remember uh, I used to have a buddy of mine when I was a little kid, and I think he went to bed or something, and I hated spending the night at his house. Because every time you rolled over, you heard all that noise. Uh, if you purchase used furniture, examine it for bed bugs. Pay special attention to used mattresses and bed frames. There is nothing wrong with going to flea markets, yard sales, and those type of things. You can get some good deals and find some cool stuff there. But I'm going to tell you, before you put it in your vehicle, you better check it out. Okay? Before you take it out of your vehicle and take it into your house, you better check it out. 
Check your own bed for bed bugs from time to time. Catching them early will make bed bug treatment easier if bed bugs do occur. Sprays, insecticides are ineffective. They actually have come out with a, with a way to eradicate them from the mattress. You basically suffocate them because you zip them up in, in, a, in a liner uh, and you put the whole mattress in it. But then the mattress has got to sit there for, for a couple of months actually before you can use your mattress. So you might as well just throw that one out and go buy your new one in the first place. Don't think that your kids that go to school can't bring them home with them, okay? All right? Oh, uh, when I used to travel to the fire marshal's office, I'd monitor fire drills all over the state of Georgia. Sometimes you go to some schools and they got nice little cubby holes or lockers or little pegs for the kids to hang their backpacks on, that type of thing. And then sometimes you go into school and they're all, you know, the teacher just says, throw them in the corner. So, uh, you know, don't think that you don't need to check your kids' stuff as well. Steps to taking. Steps to take when inspecting a room for bed bugs. Beds must be inspected carefully, even if it is the point of dismantling the bed for easier inspection and possible treatment. Check for excrement, which shows itself as dark brown spots on sheets and mattresses. Check under behind other pieces of furniture, such as chairs, couches, and dressers. Remove and inspect objects, such as pictures, mirrors, and curtains. Check cracks and crevices along the baseboards and electrical outlet covers. Inspect torn or loose wallpaper and decorative borders. Let me tell you what we're going to do if we ever get them here. And let me tell you what. Well, let me tell you what what they're doing out, uh, you know, in just uh, in in the communities out there. Pest control companies are going to get filthy rich off of this because really the only two ways to kill them effectively is to heat a room up or heat, end up heating the whole house up or, uh, or either uh, freezing them to death, okay? Uh, they actually make, there's two companies now that make a heat shield. That heat shield is actually adjustable by, by height and width where they can come in, they can set it inside of a doorway. They have to crank the temperature up in that room to a minimum of 140 degrees. They have to hold it there for two and a half hours, okay? And that will eradicate the bed bugs. Or you can freeze them to death. Now let me tell you, if bug house comes to your house to spray, to spray for anything, just do a normal uh, spray, okay? What do they charge you? They charge you a pretty good piece, don't they? All right. Now, what are they going to charge you if they got to hang out with you for three days? All right? You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, check out your stuff and make sure before you bring, if you don't have them now, and I know when, most of the time by this time somebody's scratching themselves in here, so, uh, so uh, uh, anyway, I don't see anybody scratching, but the thing is, check out what you got at home. If you know you don't have them at your house right now, that's a good thing. You can now prevent them from coming into your home, okay, because we want to prevent them from you bringing them into our campus, okay, uh, because we feel like that's going to be the main way that they get in here. If we were taking admissions like we used to take admissions, then we'd have a lot more probable, uh, I mean, a lot more potential for, for having uh, uh, the bed bugs getting in here. But we feel like the main way they're going to get in here is with staff bringing them in. Uh, if we ever get them, we're going to have to do the same thing that you'd have to do if you got them at home. We're going to have to hire an outside uh, pest control company to come in, or it may be more feasible for us to purchase some of those uh, uh, heat screens or heat shields. Uh, they kind of do, but they're actually more prolific breeders than a cockroach, and they're, a cockroach's eggs, they only, they only uh, are good for about 30 days after they lay them. Those bed bugs, their, their eggs are, are, can lay dormant for up to a year and still hatch out. Uh, so so they're, they're very hard to get rid of. Uh, if we ever get them in, our, in one of our buildings, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to purchase some heat shields or we're gonna have to pay a, a Pest, outside pest control company to come in here and heat, our, heat up our rooms for us. So that's, that's what we would do and that's our plan if we ever get them in here. Uh, hopefully we never do because I certainly don't want to have to uh, uh, put that contingency plan into practice. Okay. Uh, any questions, comments on the bed bugs? I bet. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have. But I don't think that's the reason. I think the reason why is because there's so much more. Uh, if you, uh, there's so much better for for client care. If you have clients that soil themselves and urinate and those type of things a lot, then they're a lot easier to clean up uh, from an infection control standpoint. Any other questions, comments? 
Everybody sign the rosters. Okay, we're going to have a short little conversation about this, and then we're going to let Miss Lynn cut off her camera. Uh, back when uh, the Joint Commission was here, we had a uh, we had a young lady ask by one of the surveys, one of our housekeeping staff down in the Craig Nursing Center, uh, if you got chemicals in your eyes, what would you do? And she said, well, I think I would probably just try to get over to the nurse's station and tell one of the nurses and get them to flush my eyes out. And uh, they said, okay. And what she should have said is I wouldn't get any chemicals in my eyes because when I'm mixing chemicals, I actually wear goggles that are given to me by, by my employer. Uh, lots of times it's the way you answer things with a surveyor, which uh, makes you do something or, or they say, oh, okay. And they go on and try to dig up something else uh, to find, okay. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we got cited for that, so we had to come up with a plan of corrective action. Uh, we have numerous eyewash stations over in the dental clinic at uh, EWAC uh, in several of our uh, plant operation buildings, uh, in our laboratory, in our radiology department at the kid building, uh, where we have dedicated uh, uh, water lines to eyewash stations. Uh, but we felt like the most feasible way for this was a, a gravity-fed system. We went through our MSDS database and we made sure uh, what the recommendations were as far as the time for flushing your eyes. Uh, and it was anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes and then seek uh, additional medical treatment if needed. Uh, so we, we bought, a, this is a 20 to 15 minute supply uh, gravity fed system, okay? Anywhere where you see this <coughs> placard, that means that there is an eye wash station located behind that door. Okay. This is for staff use, this is for client use, and this is for any visitors that may have something in their eyes. We also have little eight ounce bottles of eye wash. So if you just get a, you know, something small in your eye or something like that, uh, you can take one of those, uh, because they've got an eye cup on them, they're kept on the, uh, the nurse's carts, you can just put one of those on your eyes and squeeze it and then probably effectively flush your eyes out. But if you have the need for this, that's what they're there for. Okay. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that program. Uh, plant operations fills, up, fills them up for us. Uh, when they fill them up, we have an inspection uh, ticket that's on them. When they fill them up, they note what date they filled them. They also put a bottle of stabilizer in there, which uh, keeps that water good for four months, uh, where no bacteria or organisms or anything like that can grow in it. Okay? Uh, once a week, housekeeping uh, does an inspection of these. They make sure that they're filled to the fill line. Uh, and they also make sure that they're all wiped down and nice and clean. Uh, most of the areas that they are in are around housekeeping closet areas, okay? Uh, because typically housekeeping uh, personnel are about the only ones that use chemicals on our campus. Um, every three months we have to do a flow test where all we have to do is just drop the arm on it, watch it flow, we can put it right back up, and that normally doesn't even uh, drop it below the, b below the fill line, okay? Uh, Any time that there that is seen that it is dropped below the fill line, then plant operations comes in, refills them, and the whole process starts over again. Uh, and hopefully this this fiscal year we will be able to replace all of these with a dedicated uh, water supply uh, eye wash station. But right now that's what we got, uh, and to use this effectively, it's pretty simple. They're mounted up on the wall where where basically all you have to do is bend at the waist. Uh, so they're mounted, you know, pretty high up on the wall. All you have to do is pull that down and the water's gonna start flowing. How cool is that? Okay, that's it. That's all, that's about all you have to do. Um, now I wanna get y'all to hang out here, but we're gonna go ahead and close this thing out, so I do appreciate your time and your attention today and y'all have a good day. <laughs>